So if you take this statement, if this statement is true, it becomes false. If it becomes false, it becomes true. It, if you put this statement in a computer, it's a, it will runs into infinite series. And uh, that's like a liar's paradox, one you know, of the paradox in foundations of mathematics. Like that, we have so many paradoxes which are very not ordinary paradoxes. We are deep paradoxes. One are puzzles. Puzzles you can solve today or tomorrow. But they are very foundational paradoxes. Now, let me enter further into deeper issues in the foundations of mathematics. Foundations means roots, the, on the which building stands, right? So, there are three major issues in the foundations of mathematics which came. And I am not entering into first two, I will directly enter into third issue in the foundations. These are the, some of the very good books on foundations of that theory, it tells you the real issues in uh, mathematics and this also constant companion to mathematics. Give you two, three hints to take you to the final third issue, the real issue. One of the issue which was raised actually, the principle of excluded middle. Primitive excluded middle means as we study in our computer science, in our mathematics that either A is true or not A is true. Yes? Yes or no? Everybody yes or no? I just to checking whether everybody is awake or not. Okay. So, fine. Because mathematics means you have to always keep on checking. I request speakers to keep checking the audience. Uh, so, that is the general concept which you use to make any proof in mathematics or in computer science. You prove not A, then okay, A is true. Like that, A or not A. This is called excluded middle, means there is no middle path, only this side or that side, sorry, or the, this side or that side. So, this principle was attacked by one of the brilliant mathematicians from uh, Netherlands, I think, uh, Brouwer. He said that he gave example, very beautiful example and he attacked this, he said this principle is not true. He said for example, take the digits of pi, 3.14 this, 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 right. Now he says, if I make a statement, after 1 million decimal places, there are n 4 nines together, can you say yes or no? And we don't know, we have no answer. You, if you, if you compute today about 1 million or 2 million, you can put the question for later. So, this question has I no either yes, no either, uh, it has either no, 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 you cannot answer it. So, this is called uh, question, this is the issue which is start and this is very foundational issue, do not take it very easily because most of the proofs which you use in mathematics, computer science, all the programming, you use these, this basic principle of excluded middle and this was questionable and it led to actually our, uh, we have very distinguished uh, scholars they are in that line or we say parampara or from that Brower, Netherlands, we have two, three good scholars coming, they will be talking about, it led to a big area of mathematics, intuitionism finally, they will be talking deeply into that. So, this was question, next, very deep issue, what are numbers really? This is a book by Dadkin, very renowned mathematician. This is the book, name of the book itself is what are numbers and what they could be. Is it, is it, actually, if you see the history of numbers in mathematics is very interesting and uh, very humorous because some mathematicians want to explain numbers 1, 2, 3 using infinity and some people use numbers to ex explain infinity. It goes back and forth, but we do not know what actually numbers are. It issue is really deep because uh, it is not the question of I will tell you, ok, let us go step by step. So, num what are numbers you will see what the issue is really is. It is the comprehension of the meaning of the numbers not the symbols because how for example, this box does not distinguish between two flowers, but I can distinguish. I can say this is one, this is two. But can this box distinguish these two flowers? Means the two, the two-ness, the differentness of two things, that was actually the root in question. So, how do the numbers comes, the root of the numbers is that. 
And that is the third thing which uh, arose is definitions and meaning. Actually, that was the, the, it goes from numbers, you go deeper into that point that uh, whether the meaning of the things means if you say two, the two-ness, the distinction of two items, how do you differentiate these things? So, there was a lot of actually, uh, um, lot of struggle and war kind of between uh, you, this was this all happened in the beginning of 20th century from actually if you see modern science the core of modern science from 1900 beginning to 1940 more or less everything is settled in quantum physics also all this uh, de Broglie and the uh, wave equation Heisenberg uncertainty everything happened between 1919 to 1940 30 40 years everything was settled lot of wars lot of oppositions each other but it is clear that we will know what is what is clear and same same exactly happened in mathematics this 30 40 years lot of issues about this and this is one of the one of the conversations between Herman Will one of the brilliant mathematicians and Paulia regarding the definitions and meaning you say mathematical theorems should not only be true but also meaningful what do you mean by meaningful this is a matter of honesty it is a mistake to miss philosophical statements into science well, what Paulia calls the sentiment and rhetoric I call insight and truth, what he calls science I call it pedantry. Paulia's defense of set theory is mysticism. Separating mathematics as formal from spiritual life kills it, turns into a shell. To say that only the chess game is science and insight is not, that is curtailment. Means the issue started coming that fine, I can deal with the symbols, but where is the meaning? Because the meaning is not on paper, meaning is here. So, what is here? The question is very simply. To put it very black and white in two sentences, we put the symbols, words, everything, that's fine on paper. But where does the meaning lie? Meaning lie here. And here is what? So, that is the, that is the kind of question. Then, see, yeah, you see, if you see, yeah, this is very important to note, I think the definition, the concept of definitions. We have a very good or bad, whatever you want to say, habit of defining things. You want to understand means you have to define. And there is the catch where you land up in problems. Once you start, want to define something, you will have issues. Rather, you can have, you cannot use the word issue, maybe you can have a good thing because you will have insight about the deeper aspects of life. Now, the very definition, I will tell you how it comes, <coughs> why it comes, I will tell. Take for example, the definition of set, Cantor's definition of set, which is kind of foundational because whole set theory, everything slowly, slowly started moving towards set theory and you see this, a set is gathering together into a whole of definite, distinct objects of our perception, which is we intuitively know, which are called elements of set. Now, this in, we know intuitively the distinct objects. Brouwer, one of the mathematicians, questioned this very much. How I know intuitively? What is the source of intuition? In, intuitively means inbuilt. Brouwer explains it, inbuilt. How I know inbuilt? There are two distinct things, so two elements of set. Are, how I know these things? That, that he questioned. Actually, he gave another definition of set, and that's how he founded another discipline parallel and that is also consistent and valid. So, this definition, how, why this definition, once you give some definition of something, you yourself has to come inside the definition, that is a problem, I will tell you a little bit. Uh, okay, peak of, okay, so, okay, I will tell, later I will tell you about definition. So, peak of development is that, Finally, these issues, I just give you a little hints that three, four issues, you go into that, the, the issue was really solved or you can say it came to culmination by Godel's incompleteness theorem because the, actually there are issues like Hilbert is on one side and Brouwer is kind of one side and there are people who are joining Hilbert, there are people who are joining Brouwer and uh, there was issues started fighting so much that what is the foundations of mathematics. So, finally, it came to a good uh, kind of insight or conclusion by the Goddard's incompleteness theorem that 
which is a very heavy statement, but it is true and some people try to bypass it using that Godel theorem is valid for this area, for this part, so many ways people try to bypass and uh, but the basic idea is that mathematics by itself is incomplete. You need a mathematician, until less mathematician is there, mathematics itself is cannot be complete because mathematics plus mathematician makes the complete uh, understanding. So, then question will be what is mathematician? Mathematician does not mean the dress or or the my neurons or sodium or potassium ions or carbon hydrogen atoms running in my body. Where is the consciousness lying? Where, why, what is that in the mathematics, the mathematician, the core? So, if you leave mathematician, then mathematics is coming incomplete. That is the core idea of the thing means the being, the conscious being or whatever word you want to use, if you take it out, the whole issues of uh, in mathematics comes out. And you see, if you see the roots of Godel's incompleteness theorem, they all land up into, I will tell you how little idea about. See this uh, paradoxes which I was telling you, Lyers paradox, Godel's incompleteness theorems, the question of meaning they all boil down to problems of self-reference. If you see the Godel's paradox, Godel's proof of incompleteness theorem, if you see the Russell's paradox, whatever issues they have raised, actually they have used the basic same thing, self-reference. And here everything stops. Our computer runs into loop and your mathematics has incompleteness. Because as soon as you bring in self-reference, like they bring, Godel brings, Russell brings self-reference using sets that if a set is referring to itself, all everything finally boils down the issues, major issues of the mathematics and foundation boils down to self-reference. Because when I say to you in person that this, I am a liar, you understand very clearly what I am saying, whether I am lying or true, but a computer cannot understand, a formal language or a machine cannot understand. So, there is a difference between that this self-reference, why this self-reference issue is coming? Because we are missing a self inside our mathematics. That is the basic idea. The self or the consciousness or different words are used in different traditions or a non-material being or whatever word you want to use, atma or any x, y, z words, does not matter, jivatma. This, because of this self, you remove the self, that is why your issue of self-reference is coming. And you are, because you are the conscious person who is doing mathematics and this is the cause of incompleteness. And that is how when this kind of hints came inside the mathematics uh, thing, you see so many mathematicians turned towards spirituality. You will see the history of mathematics. Actually, well, if you, I, you will be surprised, you sometime if anybody has time to go find out, Google it about Wales books, his works, beautiful. This person, he was a follower of Hilbert. He was very clear in his direction of life. But when the Brower issue came, when the issues in the foundations of came, he, he turned himself, changed himself from a student of Hilbert to a student of Brower. And because of this, and then he was convinced by, because of these issues in the foundations, he got, there's a, there's a book, there are a lot of beautiful books by Well. The open world, philosophy of mathematics and natural science. Mathematic pure inquiry in itself according to conviction of many great thinkers by special character is certainty and stringency lifts the human mind into closer proximity with the divine. So, this if one idea is that if one goes really deep inside the foundations of mathematics, he is bound to come to a very beautiful spiritual insights about soul or God which we so easily talk in our spiritual traditions. Same thing our Cantor, metaphysics in theology I can but confess had laid a sage to my soul that I find too little time for first my first love mathematics. The actually Cantor, there are beautiful work on Cantor, he went into the foundations and of course infinity and all beautiful means the spiritual aspect straight away comes out. Like it is like you go into the foundation of mathematics, you see the content which we so openly talked about our beginning of the spirituality, the soul, the consciousness or God. Of course, uh, God created, this is our chronicle. 
So, not only that mathematician did not stop there, then they got the hints that there is definitely something divine, something inside the root that is why we are having issues and they got hint to it. Not only they got hint, they started exploring deeper into spiritual aspects using mathematics. So, that is why so many mathematicians actually try to prove soul, God, consciousness that is a beautiful interesting thing. I think uh, Christoph will take you more into the ontological proof. Proof means some kind of logical argument, these are all mathematicians you see, they somewhere or other worked on these uh, aspects, you will be surprised because these are not generally known. If I ask you, if, have you heard about, uh, everybody says I have heard about uh, say Godel or Brower or Cantor, but what work they have done on this side or the other side of the coin is not generally known. So, you can go into it yourself, all these scholars even Poincare beautiful work on inspiration, intuition actually. So, all these people, Pascal that uh, somebody will be speaking I think on Pascal about probability. Euler, I will give you a one or two idea about Euler, brilliant mathematician, this is a, this is a, this is a, let, this is a book called Letters to uh, German Princes and from there this is the excerpt that to think, to judge, to reason, to possess mental feeling, to reflect and will are qualities incompatible with the nature of bodies. Means the body which we study in modern science in physics like this is a block of mass, you take the apply the free body equation on that and beings invested with them must be of a different nature such are souls and spirits. He who possesses these qualities in highest degree is called God. Very simple definition, very he is talking about soul, God very openly, very simply. And in fact, you know this book, uh, Euler, this book, uh, Prince and uh, Letter to German Princes, there were three, th oh okay, <laughs> oh okay. Is, is this to wake me up or wake you all? Okay, fine. So, I take it that it is to wake you all. So, we will finish it soon. Uh, so, this, uh, yeah, so the third part was uh, when they published it, because this world sometimes uh, try to remove God, this is very common practice here. So they removed the third part which contained all this, later it was published by some other people again. And uh, this was Euler, real happiness to be found only in God himself. Boolean, uh, there is equations for DT, there is a book, Boolean, many of you might have heard laws of thought which is kind of foundational for our co modern computer science all the logic, Boolean algebra which we use. This is Gauss, Ramanujan, an equation that you have by now you have must have. This is equation is a beautiful equation which uh, none of us uh, know how he got it. But it is true, but we do not know how he got it. This is Brouwer. So, Brouwer, for Brouwer uh, the idea is this. My life at the moment is present conviction of my ego and my belief in my representation, the belief in that which is the origin of my ego which gives me my representations independent of me is directly linked to that. And something like that like me lives and that transcend me and that is my God. So, Brower, uh, Brower concept is very simple, uh, he will ask, it is like this, he will ask you, do you exist? Answer, do you exist yes or no? So, if you exist, God has to exist, this is very simple, means if you exist and you do not know how you came here, from where you came, where are you going, there must be somebody being beyond me who has put me in this situation, much much above me and that being I call it God, that is the Brower. so okay, <laughs> okay, okay, so I think materialism is false, this uh, bell is also false. God, so this is uh, Godal and uh, uh, okay, so okay, I will end with this slide probably one or two slides, give me, do not give me third bell, I will get feel very painful. Uh, self and afterlife, okay, this is a simple logic Godal, actually Godal had beautiful books which are not known, please go to that books, many of them are even some, some people try to even hide those actually publishers and all. You go to their books and inter interviews, uh, the discussion, the very clear model says that uh, there must be afterlife, the soul has to be there and there must be afterlife. The very simple logic is reason he gives is as a mathematician one of the brilliant logician of our planet, 
He says that I know that universe has billions of years of existence here. And what is my life? 80, 100 years. I, I don't think if this world is rationally, logically built, will I be made just for 100 years? That means whole this creation has no meaning. If just for 100 years, so much big vast creation is made and after that is useless. So he says, no, 100 years cannot be reality. Billions of years creating universe and giving human life only 100 years. There must be a chance to improve ourselves, our consciousness, our being, our tendencies, our inner thoughts. So he says after life is must. Okay. There is ontological proof. I think Christophe will go more into that and this is last. Uh, so our Vedic scriptures in from our Indian tradition says that uh, the goal of our life is uh, <laughs> Okay, goal of our life is uh, to connect to the Lord, the Lord of our heart and uh, uh, until unless we do that, we will not be happy and satisfied. So, this is a poem, uh, we, there is a beautiful interesting things in uh, mathematical poems. There are poems uh, using mathematics, One of the, Dr. Singh was talking about it a lot. A uh, com couple of times we heard from his mouth that we can write poems using mathematics. So, this, here is one poem as an offering to all of you and him that, uh, that how the finite and infinite are linked. You will find the proceedings one of the articles related to mathematics and poem. So I end it here. I think thank you very much and uh, sorry for troubling my stage people. Thank you. Thank you Sri Varunagava. Now we have time for Q&A. Uh, we'll take a couple of questions. Anyone has any questions will come with the mic. Does anyone have any questions? Just raise your hands. Uh, where are you? Oh, aside from uh, Gödel and God, I think there is a simple argument uh, about the difficulty of vacuity to interpret reality with uh, mathematics. If we agree that number and the questions are a product of the mind, and that reality is a product our view of the mind then uh, you know explaining the reality with mathematics is explaining the mind with the mind which is a tautology which then does not make any logical sense right. we we don't need Gödel or uh, the beautiful idea of god to to see this inconsistency fine very good <laughs> I think when Professor Lucy stand up, I was a little worried. He's one of the renowned scholars and professor from Switzerland, Italy, also both universities. So I'm too small to put his uh, answer, his point. But his point is same. You see, uh, if you go into logic, you will go into again into that loop that uh, he's saying mind and mathematics. Exactly. This loop can only be stopped by one thing. There is no way this loop can be stopped. And that is, I will give you exact answer then you will, you can meditate on it. Can you prove that do you exist? Can you prove that you exist? This is here it stops. You will not, you know that you exist, you will not be able to prove it. So the tautology or the loop stops at you, you know that you exist, that, that is called consciousness. In Indian scriptures, it is called chitta, I have a knowledge, I exist. That is, that is a property of self. This loop stops there only, otherwise there is no way you will be able to stop that loop. I hope that helps. But you agree that this self cannot be explained by science? Oh, never ever, never ever, never, never ever. So how, see, science can explain the carbon, hydro, atom running in my body. If I, if I, what to say of me, self, self is a very big thing for science. If I give you a small bird, a small bird on the tree, can you tell me after 10 seconds where the bird will be? You are not able to predict the motion of the bird. Use projectile motion, use cardinal equation, whatever you want. You cannot. Why? Because there is something in the bird which escapes your modern science. 
that self, that spirit lies there and you cannot formalize it, you cannot mathematize it. It has a property of consciousness, it has a property of free will, it can go here, it can go there. If you are not able to get it. Thank you very much. I think. We can take one more.